Cyber warfare, terrorist attacks, a nuclear Iran, and now debt. If Congress and the White House punts on this opportunity to get our spending under control, is that a threat to our national security? Here to discuss is former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. You know, uh, Ambassador, earlier this year, Admiral uh, Mullen actually said this was a le legitimate threat, the debt issue to our national security. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, I think he's on target. I mean, number one, if the United States is economically strapped, by definition, uh, it's difficult to have sufficient revenue to provide for the national defense. And you can see in this debate that Congress is having right now, looking for large amounts to cut from the federal budget, people have turned to the defense budget. I think that's a huge mistake. But you can see where the temptation comes from. So. Let's say this was resolved without touching the, the, uh, the, the defense budget, but, uh, you know, the, the debt was raised. Uh, we already owe uh, $14 trillion and counting. Uh, do you think just the amount of money itself, the amount of interest that we have to pay, uh, that we'd be saddled with, do you think that in of itself would actually also harm us somehow nationally? Well, sure. I mean, the, the interest payment is, in effect, a deadweight loss to the economy because it's not being spent on anything productive except paying the borrowers. And I think that's an argument for a smaller overall federal budget and obviously uh, eliminating the deficit and paying down the national debt. I don't doubt there's waste uh, in the Pentagon. It's part of the government, after all. But the thing to do uh, is if, if you need to cut more, cut more out of domestic spending, find a way to fix the health care system in the Department of Defense, where I think large amounts could be spent, but don't cut major weapon systems. Public opinion now, though, you've got three undeclared wars uh, that have cost a lot of money, and it feels like right now the president does have public opinion on his side. Having said that, uh, is there any way to see this really going without any real significant cuts to defense spending? Despite the fact that you object to it, do you think it's inevitable? No, I don't think it's inevitable. I think the real problem here stems uh, from President Obama, who doesn't talk about national security issues. You can, you can look through two and a half years of presidential speeches, and only when he's kind of forced to confront it, like in Afghanistan or uh, Iraq, does he really deal with it. So he's not making the case that we do face threats around the world, the Iranian and North Korean nuclear weapons programs and others. So if the president's not making the case for national defense, it's no wonder people think that it shouldn't be a priority. And of course, a lot of people take their freedoms for granted anyway in this country. I got to quickly ask you about the notion that President Clinton said he would invoke the 14th Amendment. Uh, how, how nuts is that, uh, or is it nuts at all? It's flatly wrong. Look, that, that provision of the 14th Amendment uh, was intended, first of all, to repudiate the debts of the Confederacy after the Civil War. And when they wrote it, they added in a reaffirmation that there would not be repudiation of the legitimate debts of the real national government. So, so the, the argument that somehow this gives more authority to the president than the original Article 6 of the Constitution, which picked up the debts of the United States before the Constitution, is just wrong. And one further point. Sure. Repudiation is different from default. When it, what, what the 14th Amendment is saying is you can't repudiate your debt. A default is very different. It's a non-payment, but it's not contesting the validity of the underlying debt itself. It's uh, absolutely nuts how this is dragging on. You know, we only have really 10 seconds, but do you think the way this is dragged on hurts us to reputation and national security-wise? I think people don't understand the separation of powers around the world. I think what they really want is an answer. I think that's what the American people want, too. That's why we always have you on the show. Thank you very much. Good Ambassador Bolton, appreciate it. And after this, 